There we go. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. So um, to get us started, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Nikki Caboos, the CEO of South Florida Tech Hub. And I uh, just want to welcome everybody and, of course, the early risers this morning. I know 8 a.m. is early for some of us, but I learned who are morning people already this morning. Um, and uh, we have a great discussion with a wonderful panel this morning. So I'm going to go ahead just for the folks that um, are not as familiar, and I'm going to um, do just a couple minutes here of a presentation, a little overview of what Tech Hub is and a little bit of who we are, and then we'll go right into the conversation. Uh, can everybody see my screen okay? Perfect. Thank you for the thumbs up. All right. So South Florida Tech Hub. So our mission statement overall is building South Florida's Tech Hub. And it's a very broad statement, right? So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what we do in order to help build our South Florida Tech Hub. So we are a nonprofit 501c6 organization. We are membership driven. Uh, anything that is within technology or innovation realm. And we currently have uh, over 200 corporate members. I think we're getting close to about 250 now. And um, we've got startup companies, seed stage, idea stage, all the way th through larger enterprise. So a little bit of everybody in between. And these are just a few examples of some of our members. We've got some of them on this morning with us uh, on the panel. So you'll probably recognize uh, some of these names as well. Um, our membership, because we are, we're actually currently the only uh, fully regional tech nonprofit in South Florida. So we range from Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, and now Martin County as well. These are our four core pillars or our main focuses as an organization. So uh, talent, brand, community, and startups. Uh, so talent is anything that is talent and workforce development, um, anything from working with our universities, uh, to even K through 12. We have kids coding classes also. Um, we do a lot of branding, meaning not our Tech Hub brand, but branding South Florida as a Tech Hub and how are people viewing us from across the country, making sure that we're attracting talent and businesses to the region. Uh, community is bringing together our community leaders, those that are organizing small meetup groups and user groups all the way to the big conferences and expos and making sure that we're working with those partners to bring the community together and make sure that we are pushing down the information of where to find um, educational resources, events, everything from, you know, coupon codes, whatever you guys may need, but getting you guys connected in the community. Uh, and the last one, uh, but not least, of course, is uh, startups. So we support the entrepreneurship ecosystem and making sure that whether it is, again, a seed stage startup company, um, all the way through the larger enterprise companies that are now supporting startups. So we know um, again, a few of you that are on the panel this morning, FPL has 35 mules. Um, I know that Office Depot does a lot of uh, scholarships and sponsorships, has a new program also for supporting startups. There's companies like Ryder in Miami that have their own venture fund. So there's a lot of these larger companies that are now getting involved in internal um, corporate innovation, as well as supporting startups, uh, the startup ecosystem themselves as well. Um, I will not go through all of these individually, but um, just to show you that we do stay pretty active. So we have about between our peer groups and our uh, committees, we've got about 20 of them in total. So um, once you become a member, everything from C-suites to startup to women's council, we've got everything in between to keep you all engaged and educated. There's some of our committees as well. And uh, as far as for membership, again, we are a membership driven organization. If anybody is interested, again, I'm not gonna go through that here, but I'm happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one call. We do um, offer everything from you know, job postings on our job board to being speakers on panels like this um, and helping give educational workshops to any type of resources, depending on the stage or company size that you are. Uh, these are just a few of our events. We do stay pretty active in the community. So we have smaller events like our tech talks, uh, panel discussions like this, our community coffees. We have a podcast. Um, we typically do on Fridays lunch and learns as well. And then around the community, we have different happy hours and much larger events uh, and typically at least one major staple event a month. Uh, for anybody that is uh, potentially looking for a job opportunity, we do have a job board. It's under the button that says talent on our website. Um, and we also have something called a resume distributor. So for some reason that you're looking through the jobs and you may not find that perfect opportunity uh, right, in front, uh, right in front of you on the job board, you can actually go to the resume distributor. You create uh, a little profile 
upload your resume. And once you hit submit, it goes to a lot of our member companies all at once. So that's an easy way to get your resume in the hands of a bunch of hiring managers. We also have, oh, by the way, because I know Don's going to yell at me if I forget this. We also have um, our Tech Talent Fest coming up. It's uh, August 31st. It's going to be at Signature Grand in Davie. Um, and again, we do have some of our member companies here that are involved. Um, so if anybody's looking for a job opportunity, that would be a good one to attend as well. And last but not least, um, we do have a really active Slack channel. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's about 5,000 people on there currently. It's techhubsouthflorida.org backslash Slack. Um, and then you can also, if you're interested in being added to our newsletter, it is on our homepage of our website at the very bottom where you can sign up there, or you can actually just text your email to 561-250-7206, and you'll be added to our weekly newsletter that goes out uh, each Monday. All right, so this is what we're all here for this morning. So we have a um, wonderful panel this morning uh, with a few of uh, major companies that are here in South Florida. And then as we learned this morning, we had somebody fangirling out this morning already. <laughs> we have a wonderful, uh, agility coach that's just been uh, pretty well known in South Florida as well that's joining us. So our speakers, uh, we have Jerry O'Toole, Enterprise Agile Coach at NextEra Energy, uh, Anjali Leon, uh, Agility and Product Coach at PPL Coach, Juan Lopez, Director of Software and Product Development at City Furniture, and Andy Perry, sorry, Andrew, because I'm always calling you Andy, uh, VP of that's App my. Development <laughs> Support. Okay, <laughs> I'm so used to just calling you Andy uh, at Office Depot. <laughs> So I'm gonna shot, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And um, what I would like to do to get started is if each of you could just uh, briefly introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background or your uh, role at your current position, and then we'll get uh, right into the Q&A. So I'm just going to pick on whoever's first on my screen, which is you, Andy. So if you wanna take it away. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, happy Tuesday. Uh, Andrew Parry, uh, Vice President of Application Development over Office Depot. Um, just out of interest and in context with this conversation, uh, we have team members here in, uh, in, in the US, in Florida predominantly, but we have team members throughout the US. And we also have a large captive office now in India. So remote working it's a real interesting subject for me, and of course that agile kind of um, uh, how do we how do we how do we ensure um, that that teamwork? And as I said, Todd all the time, agile is you know programming development is a team sport. <laughs> how do we do that? So this is a real good it's a real good topic for me, and I could talk for hours on it. Perfect. Well, that's that's why we asked you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one, I've got Angelie. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anjali Leon, I'm an agility and product coach, like Nikki said, and I'm based uh, here in South Florida. I have a boutique coaching and consulting practice that uh, is called PPL Coach, or People Coach. Um, it actually stands for Purposeful Professional Leadership. That's what the PPL part stands for. Um, and so I get the privilege of uh, helping uh, people navigate this changing world of work. And the changing world of work comes a new way in which we are working these days, uh, a combination of uh, in office and working from home. And we have to kind of redesign uh, how we you know, successfully worked in the past to, to adopt these new opportunities or new challenges, however you want to look at it. So I'm really, really excited to be on this panel today. Um, I was at the very first launch of Tech Hub in that basement, in, in that office in, mm -hmm. uh, in West Palm Beach. And what a beautiful journey this has been. Kudos to you, Nikki and oh, Joe, for what, what you have created. Thank you. So I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, so grateful to be on this panel today. Thank you, no, welcome. Happy to have you. All right, let's see, we got next, uh, Jerry. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here today. My name is Jerry O'Toole, and I'm an enterprise agile coach at NextEra Energy. Uh, I might be one of the newer folks on this call. Uh, I have only lived in Florida just under two years, and I'm actually the fangirl. Uh, Anjali is <laughs> someone that I met. Uh, you know, when COVID happened in the last couple of years, I was living in the Midwest when it first started. And uh, the, the beauty of having um, 
being able to have a virtual world and now a hybrid world is that I met great folks like Anjali. Uh, there's a gentleman here on the call named MC. Uh, uh, a lot of great folks that I've had the opportunity to meet and can't wait to meet in person in this hybrid world now. Uh, some, some things that we're doing here at NextEra is transitioning into that world, right? Like the rest of you going from uh, working in person and all the collaboration and the great connections that we form in office that I'm such a fan of, uh, to not getting to see each other at all, to everything becoming a hybrid and, and how do we navigate through that? So uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to be in South Florida with y'all. Uh, pardon my y'alls, they pop out once in a while <laughs> for my Midwest days, but uh, good morning. Thanks for having me today. Welcome, Jerry. I'm, I see, I was going to say you outed yourself as the fangirl, so I'm glad you did it, not me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, Juan. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Juan Lopez. I'm the director of product at City Furniture. Um, I help lead our portfolio of agile teams. Um, we've got about 12 teams that support different values streams across the business. Um, with a lot of people located in other areas that aren't South Florida and, and, uh, and a lot of contractors in even South America uh, and a couple in India. So we started our remote experimentation and hybrid work like experimentation just before the pandemic. Um, and then once that hit, we were forced to do it just like everyone else. So it's been a learning journey and uh, I'm happy and excited to, to talk more about it today. Awesome, awesome. Welcome everybody. So uh, again, just as we are talking, if anybody has uh, feedback, comments, questions, feel free to drop that in chat. Uh, so to get our conversation started, Angela, I'm going to pick on you first. Um, so I wanted to ask the question because, you know, over, you know, Juan just alluded to it is, you know, really since the pandemic, you know, we, we all, you know, had to go remote or work hybrid, right? And so I think that we're in a, a space where, um, you know, there's a lot of companies that are kind of playing with the idea. I think hiring, you know, is also a big question right now. And so um, with hybrid, we're seeing this all the time listed in job opportunities now, hybrid roles or remote roles. Um, can you kind of help set the stage by clarifying, is hybrid work the same thing as agile working? Because you hear that a lot where people mm -hmm. saying, oh, the company's being agile, we're remote now. So can you clarify, is that the same? All right, so let me let me attempt to do that first by explaining the, the what those two concepts are in my mind. And I And I think that the pandemic did not create this situation or this opportunity. It was a trend that was happening all along and it just accelerated that trend. So I did some work with Office Depot and even as I left, they, uh, they had already been experimenting with that and that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, hybrid ways of working and agile ways of working, slightly different concepts, but they are not mutually exclusive. So if you think about agile ways of working, we kind of have this image of, at least that's been kind of drilled into our heads, uh, teams sitting around a table with sticky stickies and Sharpies and brainstorming together, or like huddling around a board. You know, the concept of being in the same physical space is something that uh, I think was a common practice for agile ways of working. And that was primarily so that it would accelerate our rate of communication, decision-making, feedback, in order to be able to adapt quickly to changing circumstances. That's the whole concept of Agile. So we have some practices that enable us to do this thing of adapting. Hybrid ways of working, to me, is a combination of working in that collaborative shared space and individually in your own chosen space. And today I think the debate is, do we work in the collaborative space of being in an office or from our homes? And the idea of hybrid is a combination of the two. So I think in a way hybrid is building agility into where we work. So we have more, more choices in that. So, so that's my definition of hybrid. And I think maybe some others might have a, a different sense of that word as well. I'd love to open it up to anybody else on the panel. Yeah, I'll, I'll I, I, I think uh, it like you, you bring up a great point that it they kind of go together because agile, you know, we know is more of a framework 
not necessarily prescriptive, like you have to do a meeting in this exact way, right? So where that relates to hybrid is, as long as you're living a lot of the spirits uh, and, and philosophy of whichever agile framework you're following, you can do that in a hybrid work setting because you can do some of your same ceremonies and, you know, uh, and practices just over Zoom, right? Because you can still maintain that face-to-face -face communication. So I think they, they can both work together um, just because you, you work remote doesn't mean you're, you, you have to stop working in an agile methodology. Right. Mm. I, I agree with one. Um, I think that in fact, if a, a hybrid team effectively has to work remote, okay. At all times anyway, but to, 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 to enable the, um, you know, to, to, to ensure that we don't leave those remote workers behind. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, and, um, but the conversations become more asynchronous. Yeah, and I read about this, and I can't remember the article, so I can't, I can't uh, quote the source. But I read about this asynchronous communication and how, uh, and it's true. We need to embrace and give people the space and time to communicate, but maybe not in real time. Okay, so um, uh, here at Office Depot, we do still encourage the daily stand-ups. It occurs via Zoom, Teams. Google, whatever your tool of choice is, yeah. Um, we're a team shop, 0365. Um, and thank, I mean, honestly, we, um, we we just finished converting just before the pandemic. Um, and as Anjali says, we, we'd also set up this captive office in India, which means we were already forced to work in that remote hybrid environment. And I can tell you that uh, the group messaging platform of choice, Slack, Teams, whatever. Yeah, okay. That has been uh, that's been that's enabled that asynchronous communication, and it's been it's been an absolute winner for us. But you've got to give the teams that space and time to work. It, 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 you're not going to have people around the desk anymore, Angeli, with that synchronous communication. The the the, the instant, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's just some feedback from what we're doing. Boy, Andy, I could sure add to that with uh, when you talk about that last point about folks not being tied to the desk and, and some of the work that they're doing yeah. requires them to be away from the desk for long periods of time, in particular at Nextera here, I help with nuclear. And that uh, that means that folks who work in our nuclear power plants for Nextera and FPL are not tied to the desk. They're out doing some of the, the things that need to be done that are critical and that are for safety for our team members. Uh, I work exclusively in IT for nuclear, however, but uh, those folks are out walking around and making sure that things are safe, tending to needs of folks in the nuclear power plant. So uh, the hybrid's been around for some time as, as uh, we've pointed out. So yeah, just wanted to add that bit. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. And actually, um, Jerry, so my my next question was actually for you was, um, so a company like FPL, I mean, I think similar to Office Depot, you guys have teams that are spread apart, right? So can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, what is the difference between for you distributed teams versus co-located teams? How has that worked prior pandemic versus now? Can you talk a little bit about that transition for you all? Because I knew you guys went back in person as well pretty quickly. We did, uh, absolutely. Uh, before the pandemic, there was a lot of in-office collaboration, obviously with everyone being co-located, a lot of travel to our sites to visit folks in the power plants and elsewhere in FPL. Uh, we still see a lot of that, but something that we saw shift in the last two years is a heavier focus on tooling. Uh, with, with being in a hybrid environment, we realized that tooling became so very, very important. Tools like Zoom that we're using today, being mm -hmm. able to meet face, to, right, being able to meet face to face, uh, the importance of turning our cameras on in a situation where you're with your teams. Uh, you know, be, we, we know also, all of you here, that, you know, more than 80% of communication is nonverbal. And just being able to see your colleagues and, and speak with your colleagues became so important. Uh, doing things like road mapping or laying out processes visually using tools like Microsoft Teams, Miro, Mural, all the great ones out there. So that's mm -hmm. some of the, the great shift that I've seen and seen successes in in the last two years. So uh, anyone else like to contribute to that? Um, you know, I think I, I, I would agree with you, Jerry. I think what 
what technology has enabled us is to be able to do this combination of uh, in-person work or, or remote work much more fluidly. Uh, you know, we, we're able to get some of the things that we were able to get when we were in person and brainstorming together and collaborating together, we can use technology to be able to support that. Um, so, so I, I think that, I think it's a you know from your from your question like is this is this the thing of the future? I I think it is. I think we've all had the experience of the benefits of being able to be remote, and we have we have decades and maybe even centuries of experience of the benefits of being in person. Mm -hmm. To me, it's hybrid is the intentional combination of the two. I think we have a real opportunity to design our work world so that we are taking advantage of the upsides of both of those ways of working. And it's not just being okay with like, okay, yeah, we can do remote work and we can have teams all around the world being able to do that through technology. We are, there is a loss of something. And there is a loss of something when we are forced to be in person all the time. So I would love for us to be able to explore what would that look like if we were to design our work worlds that were really intentional combination of the upsides of both. I think that's a that's a really good way to put it is the importance of how we design the work and like the processes and workflow in our day to day right and the tools that go behind that. So whether it's a video conferencing software whichever one you choose, you need that now right just conference calls don't fly, it's not enough, um, or a messaging platform. If your whole company is on the same messaging platform, that's simple. It might sound like a given, but we've had in the past consolidation go down from like three or four different platforms down to almost everyone is on Slack now, which facilitates a lot of that communication. But um, having the right tools to fit the way you've designed your work to be done and the way you design your meetings to flow um, is almost more important when you're in a hybrid setting because you can't just make up for a lack of the de good design of work by just walking over to someone's desk anymore, right? Like you have to have mm -hmm. those uh, those standards kind of um, like understood by everyone. So we're all working the same way. Yeah. No matter where yeah, we are. I think, I think the, um, and, and this actually also may answer, help answer uh, Eva's, or Eva's question in the chat here. Um, uh, the tooling has certainly really helped us and it really enabled that collaboration, uh, that remote collaboration. Um, the, the, particularly the, the Slacks, that group messaging, the, the project-based messaging, um, teams-based messaging. I mean, that, that, that has certainly enabled work to be, um, uh, to be grouped together, to enable ideas to be to 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 develop, yeah. You know? um, but even you know, even on the tools, I I you know, it's interesting. I'll give you an example. You know, there's lots of tools out there. We've named a few here. There's the, and and you know, every day someone comes to with another tool, and I'm like, as a team, set you, you know, you make the decision what tools you want to use in the team. But please just you know, stick around the common frameworks of O365 <laughs> or T or or, or 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 Slack or something. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> um, but but even in these tools, even in the tools such as um, the Excel's or the Sheets, okay, you can have collaboration within those sheets. And and when you go to hybrid mode, you know. The old days of someone standing up on a whiteboard and 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 and, and everyone firing you know points to this guy that can't spell and writes awfully yeah okay right <laughs> um, uh, those days are gone yeah right? that's you, 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 fire up Excel fire up sheets let everyone get in there and collaborate together and the great thing is with the teams and the and the slacks etc that sheet it it lives. Okay, it can continuously live. And so those ideas can continuously be, can grow, can develop, can change. And, 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 and that's what I see. And it's, 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 it's a, um, I think it's really interesting. Um, and I think um, we're in a very, it, it's not gonna stop Yeah, Okay, we, we're gonna see new tools come out that's really gonna help this problem. Yeah, and I, um, so this is actually kind of perfect segue, Andy, into the next question here, part of the discussion, because you guys are talking a lot about um, the tools and kind of best practices around using these tools and creating uh, kind of fluidity so that everybody's on the same tools, they know how to communicate on them, where to find things. But one one uh, 
one question I had was there's still a lot of talk. And if you see posts everywhere, you hear this in other panels about, you know, I think right now we're assuming as we're talking, or at least that's what I'm kind of picking up is that everybody on the team is hybrid. It's a hybrid work environment, but there's still a lot of comments around the folks that are completely remote. So, you know, some folks like for you, Jerry, there's people that are going in and out. They still get a little of those touch points with the teams that they're, they're still able to see kind of people here and there. Um, I'm curious, Andy, and even for some of you, Jerry, that, you know, have mm -hmm. done these things. I mean, all of you actually, other companies have dealt with folks that are completely remote and never get the chance to go in the office, don't know anybody, and maybe haven't had that chance to be hired, you know, when it was hybrid for them. And they're just literally hundred percent remote. So how do you, how do you not lose those <clears throat> folks? How do you um, make sure that they don't feel, you know, left behind or make sure that they're engaged? What are some of those best practices as far as, you know, culture wise, not necessarily so much. So just to, to, you know, set the context here, okay. Office D, I mean, this is my garage. I'm working from home right now, okay. And, and, and I'm, I'm only a mile away from the, the, the main big building that's that way. Um, I, I, uh, we are fully remote. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to, because, I mean, it all started with the pandemic. When COVID occurred, we all, you know, scattered. Um, but then we started to get a lot of attrition in the last year. Okay. And I think probably maybe other teams have seen that. And we started to hire beyond just South Florida. Yeah, okay. And so I, in the US, I have team members over in Seattle. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very conscious. I don't wake those guys up. Okay. And I don't start texting them. Okay. Or messaging them until, until, you know, their time zone comes live. Um, but also we have this captive. We, we pushed a lot of our work to, we had a lot of contractors at Office Depot and we mm -hmm. insourced into a captive office in India, in Pune in India, which is kind of, you know, the inverse of outsourcing, but, you know, we achieved the same thing. <laughs> and, 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 and that forced us to remote work. Now, what, 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 where, where it becomes really interesting is the people aspect here. Yeah, okay, and let's just talk about that a second. We talked a lot about tools, but from the people perspective, like we've just gone through, we brought in 30 interns over the summer. 30 interns and they all came in in a remote environment in fact the interns themselves were in atlanta chicago places i'd never heard of i'm english by the way i am in south florida okay just to be clear i've been here 15 years um but the but 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 how do you you have to give people space and time you have to you have to understand that in a remote world in a in a 2d world it's a 3D world, yeah, okay. We, 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 you, 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 it takes a little bit more energy to bring people on and keep people in the team and keep people, people engaged. Now, as a leader, I am doing more and more one-on-ones. Now, I'm also conscious, okay, I'm also conscious that I don't want to drive up the number of meetings either, yeah, okay. And, and, and how do we keep the meetings um so that people have the space and time to work yeah okay and that's a delicate balance and i'm not sure i've even got that right and maybe that's another subject we can have for another day um to learn from each other yeah that, that's it that's a great point it's it really a, there's a big i guess emphasis or need for the leader for any leader in, in in this environment now to consciously keep those touch points going with with your remote workers right you don't leave them behind by making sure that you still get those, you know, hey, how's your day going, you know, uh, types of conversations that you would normally have in the office, obviously with a balancing, not just messaging people all the time while they're trying to work or adding too many meetings, but those extra manager touch points become critical. And I think in the remote or hybrid environment, it, it does either expose if you as a leader are not doing these things uh, more quickly, uh, or uh, it really, you just have to adapt and you, you see like, hey, I'm not getting the engagement out of this person through the current process. So how does my process need to improve mm -hmm. um, to keep, you know, all these different people across wherever they may be working. Um, and sometimes there's even small things like you mentioned with uh, somebody working in a different time zone is being mindful of that. Right. We get yeah. most of us that have been here in like East Eastern time zone, are, like I've been here my whole life um, and we're a brick and mortar retailer only in South Florida. But now that we have workers throughout different time zones, uh, we have to be mindful that, you know, 8 a.m. here is 6 a.m. in other places and uh, and vice versa, too. You know, if it's late for us, their workday might not be over yet. So navigating through that is important to make sure we don't either leave remote workers behind or treat them almost like other 
right? And, and definitely making sure they don't feel less important than our in-person or more closely located uh, workers. You know, we have to maintain the same level of engagement with the remote workers as well. One, if I may, I'd love to add, oh, pardon me. No, no, I, I wanted to add a small point to that uh, in that uh, soliciting feedback from those who are working hybrid and work remote, right? I, and I knew you all would start mm -hmm. shaking your heads at this, is uh, asking them what their needs are, you know, particularly as a leader or even just in our role as agile leaders as we work with teams. Hey, what, what works better for you all? Uh, would, you know, playing games maybe through Teams chat or things like that, giving folks things to look forward to, uh, but definitely soliciting their feedback too, right? And making sure that we're, uh, while we think we know what they need, if we're in office folks or if we're remote or for hybrid folks, ask, right? And have those conversations with your teams, have those conversations with folks you lead, have the conversations throughout your organization. What do you all, th you know, bring them to the conversation about mm. uh, how they can best integrate and, and join and feel part of things. And everyone's going to say something different. So there's, there's probably no standard cookie cutter way, but uh, yeah, user feedback, I think is, is another uh, great thing we can try. Yeah, I, I love that, uh, what you said, Jerry, because it, it really helps us think about the experience, the employee experience. Juan, you are a product guy, so you'll get, you'll get this even more than the others, I think, that what if we treated the employee experience like a product and a product that was uh, analog that's going digital, basically a digital transformation of our employee experience? And so how do we reframe that in a way that actually makes sense for, for our new experience? A um, couple, couple of things I wanted to add to what each of you said, the leader's role, Andy, I think the leader's role changes and the one-on-ones so, so important. But the role of the leader now is, uh, I think I, I read this from, from Microsoft, uh, they have a model called MCC, but the role of the leader is to mentor, to coach and to care. That's your job. And if we kind of shifted to be that, then the team kind of takes care of takes care of the rest. The other piece of the puzzle is when it's remote work, it's I think important to not leave people behind is for everybody to have the same experience, a shared experience. So even if you're in the office, when you're engaging with your remote team, if they happen to be distributed all across the world, you go into a huddle room and you join the call just like the, every single other person mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Because that shared, that shared experience is the trick to making remote stuff work. So nobody feels like they're, nobody is left behind because I think our bias is towards the person who's sitting down right next to us, whether we like it or not. And so how do we create that, that environment where that doesn't happen? Um, and then the time zone challenges, oh my goodness, right now, that is the, one of the biggest things that I'm experiencing with the teams that I coach, because it's not just like two different time zones. It's literally where they have only one hour of overlap time in their entire day. And so for so many people, their day is a very, very long day because they need to meet with somebody in China early in the morning or late, whatever. And then somebody in some other part of the world late at night. And so our intentionality about how we design our day, maybe we need to introduce siesta time, like we, you know, or, or something in the middle of a day, because it's not possible for us to have that, that, you know, that long of a day and redesign our practices. So maybe scrum teams that require at least a minimum of four hours of overlap time. If you, if you happen to have teams that are, don't have that, then designing for Scrum is going to be a challenge. And so what is another way of working with each other? I think somebody mentioned a combination of synchronous, asynchronous, Andy, you mentioned it earlier. The asynchronous part of how we work is gonna become more and more, uh, more and more important. Like, sorry, I, like I told you, I have a lot to say about this. So what is <laughs> But it's also important that, 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 that yeah, as as a leader or as a you know as a team member, that um, it is an asynchronous communication. It's not an instant response, nor should we expect an instant response. And uh, you know, one of the things I'm mindful of when I'm talking to my team is 
Um, I try not to send them, even if I have messages um, that, I, that I suddenly think up of in the evening or a weekend or something, I don't send them. Yeah, okay. And in fact, a lot of these tools now have this send at a certain time and I'll send the message so it appears the following day. In fact, I forget sometimes I've sent it. I get a message back saying, <laughs> but, um, uh, whatever. Um, but I think the asynchronous communication, allowing that and allowing design to occur or conversations to occur um, over a period of time okay let the documents evolve if you like yeah okay let the conversations evolve is important it's important to include everyone um, and to make sure that um, and, and actually I think I think Angeli in these communications there needs to be also an acceptance that we can change. It's not fixed. Okay. Before we would all come up to an agreement. Are oh, we all aligned on the whiteboard? Yeah. Okay. Right. Tick, tick, tick. Let's walk away. Well, now it's okay to change and we have to accept that we can change. Yeah. And, 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 and I see that happening a little bit more, um, you know, and, and that's a good thing as well. I love this part of the conversations. So I'm like forgetting I'm moderating. I'm just listening and learning right now. <laughs> no left behind. Yes, exactly, Prakash. No left behind. Uh, great yeah. comments in yeah. the chat. Yeah. I uh, I did have um, a question. Again, I'm going to address this to, to Juan, but um, I think, again, this is for all of you, is, you know, for the majority of our companies, especially on the panel, you know, a lot of us, and I know that, you know, you had some teams uh, in India, and I know that Jerry, you guys did as well, had some remote teams. So you guys had a little bit more experience uh, with this previously, but, you know, we still have a lot of companies out there that are still not offering hybrid or remote work. Um, I know this because we work with a lot of them and a lot of them are struggling because the companies are a little bit um, more old fashioned minded. They still believe in the teams being there, being, you know, side by side, you, like you said, working in the scrum teams with the stickies and everything on the wall and being able to do that. So my question, Juan, is for you is since, uh, you know, you you all with City, I think, did this more recently, the transition, right? And having to work more remote or have hybrid work. Um, what would you say uh, like or advice would you give to companies that maybe are thinking about doing this, really unsure if this is going to work for them. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of companies, I, like, again, I talk to them every day that are like, yeah, I'm, you know, the, I'm trying to push my leadership to be able to offer this. Um, I know that a lot of recruiting or HR managers are trying to push their, their leadership to be able to offer it because competitively, there's a lot of people now that say, I won't take a job opportunity unless I get hybrid or remote work. And so there's a lot of uh, companies that are missing out on great talent. So can you talk a little bit about that transition? Um, Kind of going to the hybrid work yeah definitely and um and you mentioned like what what advice would we give to companies is i, I think first is, it's pretty clear and evident that you have to offer remote and hybrid work um but how do you go about doing that how do you go about convincing especially you know senior leadership of companies that may be resistant to that um and the base piece of advice or what helped us in our transition was having having the management system or enough focus on a management system that helps everyone feel comfortable with that transition. And the reason I say that is because when you shift from going fully in office to remote or hybrid work, you lose the ability to manage by walking around, right? Mm -hmm. And by seeing people at their desk, which is an old school way of managing. And it really just means you don't probably have enough of a system and a process. And it's important for, for leadership of any company to really look at themselves and say, hey, is my management system where it needs to be? Is that why I'm worried about like the uh, allowing my remote workers uh, to not ever come to the office? And, and it means big pieces of that are the visibility into the work and the work output, right? The standards around process and the way teams have agreed to work. Um, I think if you get through all of that, and there's so many different things, right? Whether it could go on and about it, but the pro if you already have gaps in your system, um, when you're in office, they're just going to be exposed more during remote and hybrid work. Um, so if you jump into it, you may be forced to solve or build better like process into, into visibility of work or performance management, anything like that um, when you go into it. But I think that's the beauty of, you know, we talk about the topic here is agile and in a hybrid world, agile has a lot of practices within the framework that I think fit to 
solving some of these remote and hybrid problems like the visibility into the work and the ability to inspect work and things like even just a um, sprint review right and being able to show the work output prioritizing working software not people just sitting at their desk looking busy we want actual output and um, I think all of that gets exposed um, or really is what managers should focus on solving rather than saying I have to keep people here they should ask, why do I feel like I need to keep people here? Is it my own system? And um, and if they, that that's really the journey they have to go down, I think, to be successful if they're starting right now, if they're not uh, remote or hybrid at all. You know, Juan, I, I can't help but keep hearing in my mind what you just said about focusing on outputs. Uh, one of the best leaders I've ever had is one that had mentioned that uh, my concern, Jerry, is are the outcomes. I'm not as focused on your outputs, but what are the outcomes that that the team is achieving or that you all are able to achieve while working in this model? Um, just had to, uh, that's going to be swirling through my mind there. So okay. thanks for I that. I saw your comment in chat too. When you said yeah. gaps in your system, I'm like, that's actually pretty good because that, that yeah. kind of stuck in my head too because I think it is very much revealed during uh, you know hybrid or remote work is because those things stand out much more then they can kind of get lost when you're in person in an office. Yeah. You were going to make a comment, Angelie? No, I saw a few things swirling around from Minakshi and Andy. It's about trust. Mm -hmm. I and I think this is reveal <clears throat> if, there's, if there's discomfort with remote work, maybe there is pointing to lack of trust. And how do we build that trust with the people that we work with? But I want to be a little bit of a devil's advocate here. And when we think about hybrid, hybrid is a combination. So if we think about from a, from a larger thing, why not have companies that want to be in person and companies that want to be completely remote and companies that want to be hybrid? Because each of us individually have preferences too and work more effectively in one of those environments or another. So if this comp these companies want to, they're going to you know, ex experience the upsides of in-person work, and they're gonna experience some of the downsides of in-person work, but that's the choice that they are going to make. And if it, if it works for them, great. Uh, so I think that, that, that for us to be able to have a society that allows for all of these, why not? Why not? If they can make it work, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Angelie, I'm going to, I'm actually going to stick with you and pick on you for my next question. So uh, right before, you know, we were talking, when we first hopped on, we were talking about um, this post that you had made on LinkedIn, right? And it got me thinking was, you know, um, prior pandemic and prior uh, a lot of our hybrid or remote work, I feel like a, a lot of the complaints that you were pretty right on in your post that a, a lot of the complaints that companies are having or that employees are having have almost swapped during the pandemic and now with remote work. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that really caught my attention. I'm like, this is actually pretty spot on. <laughs> uh, so for, for the people who didn't see the post, which is most of the people here, uh, let me just give a little bit of context. So I was just, you know, this, this topic was swirling in my head and I was just thinking how ironic it is that pre-pandemic, a lot of the companies were actually starting to hire people from outside of their local area you know, either for cost reasons or to be able to attract talent from all over the world. And so they were advocating for distributed remote teams. And the team members would be so frustrated that they had to work, like they had to, you know, they didn't have everybody in the same space. And they had to kind of try to figure out how do we actually collaborate effectively across time zones. They didn't have the tools to be able to do that. And so they were you know, against the, the, the distributed work. And so now it feels like the argument for going back to the office is coming from management who feel like there's something that's missing and employees, workers actually are advocating for working from home. So it's kind of like it went in the opposite direction. And, and I was just kind of reflecting on this and I thought, how, how, how funny, and I, I really feel like we have an opportunity at the moment to design a system that works better than it ever did. Pre-pandemic, pandemic, 
Like we've learned so much. And so how do we do that and see each other's point of view? And so my deduction was that, was that what if uh, managers could ask the question, what is the benefit for me as a manager for an employee to work from home? And if you're an employee, to ask the question, what is the benefit for me as an employee to work from the office? So kind of like switch, switch your perspective and in recognizing the upsides of the thing that the opposite thing, we might be able to actually design something that works for all of us better than it ever did before. So, okay, I'm gonna throw that out to the others. <laughs> to see what, what is your take on this? Because it was, an, it was an invitation for further conversation in the post that I put out. Uh, I think that's great to the, focus on the, on the perspective and the message for why to work more remote or why to work in the office versus imposing your will because your title says manager, right? Like we have to realize that, you know, our associates are, are, are human beings too. And, and we have to, really focus on the on the message behind and the why we even want people to come back to the office right there are benefits to it and like for example i work from home about 30 minutes from the office but i still enjoy going to the office sometimes for a change of scenery or certain types of meetings where i think i can get my point across in person so i definitely focus on the benefits and any any management that is trying to navigate this space should focus on the benefits of both like you said i think that's a great point and keep that message positive because there are positive aspects to both um, rather than approaching it from a imposing everyone needs to come back to the office. Well, well why, right? You should be able to explain why and, and why to that extent. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I think that's great that you, you, you message the perspective and, and focusing on the benefits. Just to play, uh, just to talk on that a little bit, um, and I'm not saying this is my opinion one way or the other. Uh, in, in some communities I see, and I wonder if you all are as well, seeing that if you're part of one team and if you have workers uh, that need to be on a site 100% of the time, your IT folks as, should be as well because they're considered one team. Uh, and again, not saying I have an opinion one way or the other. On the, I see some head shaking. So perhaps you all have heard, heard uh, this way of thinking as well. Uh, just curious if, if anyone had thoughts on that. Well, I mean, uh, there's, there's, um, this is interesting, Jay. I mean, uh, Office Depot is seen as a retailer. Okay. And you see, you know, we, we had the stores on the, on the, on the, on the, on the corners of the block, et cetera, but that's a small part of our business. Okay. We're predominantly a digital organization and a supply chain you know, and, and, and in fact, software company as well on the side so 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 it's it is perceptions um tech the thing is is that um in our organization um the retail group are very much on site okay and they are very but the support services are not finance hr all those support and tech all the support services are just you know they're working in that hybrid mode right now that remote pretty predominantly remote um, any of you go past the big building down the road, there's about 10 people in there. Um, and um, so that's, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a leadership decision, okay, um, and on, on that. Um, we've not had a lot of kickback from it, but I think that's because it, only a small part of our business is actually retail. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting point. Um, can I just call out, I want to call out what, um, what Ricardo said in the chat, yeah, just for a second, yeah, because he he had he, he nailed another point. We talked about time zones on communications, um, but but when communications become less verbal and more uh, more 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 text based, yeah, um, that the, there's there's the, the the tone in the text or the way things are written and the cultural differences do come into play and we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful in a remote environment that we don't, um, we don't allow bias in how we listen. We, and you know, we have to, we don't allow that bias in um, and, um, and, and, and we have to really listen properly. It's not just about communicating, it's about listening as well. And, and Ricardo brought up a great point. Um, and, and this is particularly important when you get into 
Um, uh, uh, Jerry, you can have as many yowls as you want. I can't even do it. Yeah, okay, right. Okay, <laughs> we got we got team members all over the globe, um, and um, and and it, it is it is actually an important point, Ricardo. Okay, a good one to bring up. Yeah, yeah and actually, I, oh, go ahead, one. I was going to comment on that. I, th I think that that is a great point to emphasize further. Like the the tone in writing, you got to make sure you don't sometimes take it the wrong way because somebody is multitasking short. Uh, messages and things yeah. like that but also when you're communicating out is making sure that your message isn't vague especially if you're in a leadership yeah. position that <laughs> sometimes making it concise there's an art to making it concise but also clear the points you want to make so that it doesn't result in a tons of other questions back and forth or a misinterpreted message um is very important and it touches on what we we're saying with effective asynchronous communication um, I've been experimenting. I don't know if you guys have seen in, in whoever uses Slack, like uh, short videos that you can record and send. Mm -hmm. So it's one way, right? Rather than a meeting, but it also maintains some face to face. You might be able to convey more tone in meeting uh, in meaning than just text. Um, but these are all different things that in the office, in a full time office environment, we didn't really have to think about before. But as all right. the communication shifts there, written um, or virtual, the, the way that you convey messages and meaning uh, becomes even more important. Um, and and uh, yeah, I, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a really important point, Juan, is, uh, you know, you're talking about the use of video. Um, I think that is something that's becoming more predominantly, uh, it's becoming more common now, you know, because people, you see it on LinkedIn, like you said, Slack has added it. There's uh, tools like Loom where you can record yourself and record your screen at the same time explaining something. Um, and to uh, Todd's comment much earlier in the conversation, you know, he uh, jokingly put in there calling a meeting to have meetings. And I think that <laughs> keeps us away from that because we do have a tendency to do that. A lot of companies, I know personally, I've sat through where I'm like, I'm pretty sure that could have just been an email or that could have been a message in Slack, but Correct. we do have yeah. that problem. And so I think uh, video is gonna become a really strong tool so that we don't have to do that. Yeah. I, uh, so I know we've got uh, just a couple minutes here. Um, I wanted to allow anybody um, that is listening this morning and here in with, uh, with us in Zoom, if you wanted to take yourself um, off mute, we've got maybe about five minutes. So if anybody have got probably questions enough for two questions, if anybody wants to take themselves off or drop a question in chat, I'm happy to get that to our panel. Do we have anybody that's got a question for the panel? I mean, I'm curious about change saturation. So, you know, kind of pulling on the question I asked earlier with all these new tools, new ways of working, redefining work, what it is, where it takes place. That's a lot, right? So how are you um, <laughs> embracing that people might be a little uh, saturated with all the change and trying to do their day-to-day Um, I, I could maybe add to that. We we hosted an Agile Summit uh, here at NextEra just about two months ago, and I've got two of my great colleagues on who were actually part of the presentation group, uh, Ricardo Rivera and Jamie Christian, and uh, saturation of tools is is a thing, uh, but uh, to Anjali's point in the, in the chat as well, let your teams experiment and try different things, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily forcing any one tool over the over the other. Um, Jamie, there was one that you had demoed, uh, uh, the Surface Hub, and some different things that your team was doing with that that seemed to have really taken off. Yeah, the Surface Hubs definitely work for us. And one of my points when I was giving that presentation was um, the reason it worked for us is because they were so readily available. Like they were just, they were in the conference spaces that we're using. So of course we're gonna use a tool that is there and, and available to us. But I think one of the more interesting questions I got asked during that summit was like, why would you recommend the Surface Hub? And I'm like, no, 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 my friend, you missed my point here. I'm not necessarily recommending the Surface Hub. I'm saying this is what worked for us. Mm -hmm. And that's the best thing you can do for your teams. Mm -hmm. Go out, experiment, find just what works for you. But I really love the idea of not being prescriptive in your tool set. Um, and allowing your teams to figure out what works for them in the space that they're in. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's really important to figure out what works best for your team within your own company as well. And Jerry, I think you mentioned earlier, um, asking for the feedback often, right? And getting that feedback loop um, 
because on the topic of changing too much and change, getting exhausted of the change, like I've heard that from some of my teams, we're changing sometimes processes or tools too often. Um, but we hear that through the feedback loop. And then eventually you come to some best way of working. It's like the best way for us right now. And then from there, um, you know, you can only get there through experimentation and then asking for feedback of your teams and not just assuming this tool is going to work for everyone because it worked for you. Um, it's really important to get that feedback. Yeah. I was mm. going to ask, um, do we have, uh, yeah, she's on Brittany West. Uh, are you able to come off mute for a second? Cause I want to pick on you. I know that you did a presentation a while back, um, you know, about city and, and getting feedback for the sales team and all that. Cause I think that goes right along with what we're talking about is not pushing a new tool on somebody and telling them how to use it, but getting feedback and they can actually probably build something or tell you what you need. Can you talk a little bit about that experience real briefly? Yeah, so my um, high level, my introduction into the IT department at City Furniture was through my experience in sales. Um, we were launching new technology, uh, particularly mobile apps um, to be the front facing connection on top of our IBM I legacy system. And without, without sales representation, we wouldn't have adoption that we had within the feedback that we were able to get. So. I, I led the project and became the product owner of those mobile apps, but through the entire process, we had multiple sales associates, sales managers, um, anywhere from the veterans down to new hires um, in the process, helping us redesign the training, how we're gonna greet, how we're gonna work with these new iPads. And through, through that, we were able to launch them fairly quickly within six months and get adoption within less than a year. Um, and that would have never happened without having continuous feedback and enhancements and changes from the sales team, so. Awesome, thank you, Brittany. So uh, I just looked down, we are nine o'clock on the dot. So uh, I'm going to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, thank you, all of our panelists. Uh, thank you for those of you that hopped on uh, last minute and Brittany let me for a pick on you. <laughs> so um, again, thank you for everybody showing up bright and early this morning. Um, if anybody has, um, any questions, comments, you know, please feel free to connect with um, our panelists on LinkedIn. I believe that they all drop their LinkedIn's um, in chat here. And uh, of course, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I'm always available as well. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you guys at an upcoming Tech Hub event, but uh, have a wonderful day and a great week, everybody. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thanks Thank so you much. Everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.